When I read nothing but evolutionary books, I believed in evolution. And so God was certainly not somebody that I would seek. Ed Lockwadera was never your run-of-the-mill evolutionist. The evidence told him that there simply must have been a creator at the very beginning of the process, but the creator's identity was simply a mystery beyond science. Growing up, I did have somebody tell me, you know, God's like a giant version of your father. Man, my father was not a big guy, but he could hit like a mule. He was a scary dude. My solace when I was a little kid, I grew up, there was swamps and lakes near me, so uh, with things would be kind of crazy at the house. I'd just run away and go catch frogs and turtles, and that was just my, uh, my getaway. Like most evolutionists, Ed did not understand God's love. Instead, he found his peace through adventures with wild animals. This passion for animals would not only drive Ed to get a PhD in zoology, but to eventually start a zoo and rescue center with his wife Brenda in Bolton, Massachusetts. This is a story of how one couple's love for animals led them to finding their creator, a God more compassionate and relatable than they could ever imagine. This is the destiny story of Ed and Brenda Laquadera. That's one of the things I specialize in, is any kind of alligator, crocodile, crocodilians. Early in his career, Ed would share his collection of rescue animals with elementary schools as a teaching tool for evolution. One day, while preparing for a presentation, Ed was struggling to find a definitive answer on when alligators evolved. My husband, is he's a question asker, and he always thinks that I have the answers to everything, so he would ask me all of these questions, and he would sit at my kitchen table with all of his animal books, with all, I mean, because we have a ton of animal books, and he's like, each one of these books says that the age of an alligator and they, they date them back differently. This one says that they're like a million years old. This one says that they're a hundred million years old. He's like, nobody agrees with anything. And he's like, I just want to be able to go to a school and pull an alligator out of the box and teach the kids about the alligator and just tell them that alligators are this many years old. I believed in creation first because just through science, it's just not possible for us to evolve. I had studied like Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, all this stuff. So I said, okay, we're created, so like, now what? You know, you get the images from TV, whatever, you know, a god with the big white beard roaming around to punish you and to tell you how terrible you are and you never could be good enough. So, you know, like that parent that you just can't please. I was doing an animal show in the basement of a church and there's a guy in the back comes in, he's dribbling a basketball, and he's just watching. At the end of my show, I'm packing up, and he comes up to me, he goes, oh man, really doing the Lord's work, brother. And then he's talking, and um, he starts telling me about his uh, wife and his, and his kids, and I said, oh, that's cool. So then I relax and talk to him some more, and you know, um, he goes, oh, you should come and see what I do. I work here. And I, go, I literally say to him, I said, like, you the ma do maintenance? Like, what do you do? He's, he's like, I'm the pastor. And I was like so ignorant about churches and stuff. I'm like, you can get married, you can play sports. Like, I just didn't think they could do anything except wear like a white robe. After meeting this pastor and attending his church, Ed and Brenda got born again in 1997, the same year that they started Animal Adventures, a zoo and rescue center that they ran out of their very own house. Though they had a relationship with God, their understanding of his character was still one of a strict and harsh father. That is, until 2008, when Ed was invited to a Gospel Truth seminar. My mother-in-law, she had been following Andrew, and Andrew was coming to Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, which is about 20 minutes from where we were living, so she didn't like to drive at night, so she had asked if we could take her. When he came home that night, he was wide-eyed, and he was like full of adrenaline, and he comes in the house, he's like, Brenda, you, you have to go to this conference tomorrow night. The teaching was just so pure and simple. I just knew, like, that's true. Like, that's the truth. And so we went back the next night, and we were just hooked. You aren't going to hear the things that I'm saying very often. You'll hear that God is just looking, and He's waiting for you to get out of line. Bam! He's going to get you. I've actually had people before say that they pictured God as an old man in heaven with a huge, long beard, leaning over the rails of heaven with a lightning bolt, just looking for somebody to hit. His love is unconditional towards us. 
It's not based on some goodness. It's crazy to think that you can, you know, do things so un, unperfectly and just have a, a God that has, so, has done so much but loves you as an individual. Kind of mind-blowing when you think of it. Wanting to know more of God's unconditional love and grace, Ed and Brenda attended our Karis location in Gardner, Massachusetts, where for the next two years, they became grounded in their identity in Christ. Right from the beginning when we heard Andrew's teaching and learned about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that miracles were still here, we just became obsessed with it. Having the quality teaching from the quality staff at Karis Bible College, I mean, you know, you can't go to Karis Bible College without getting to love people who teach. And we were just kind of on a discovery program. Ed was like, I think we should be pastors. After years of sitting under the Word, Ed and Brenda knew they were called into full-time ministry, but had no idea where to start. As Ed was trying to figure out the next step, God told him to use what was, quite literally, already in his hand. I was in my zoo one day, and I'm going, God, where do I get a church? How do I do this? And I just saw this vision of where we do our animal show. We do three daily shows at our little zoo, and God just showed me preaching there. And he said, use what's in your hand. In October of 2016, Ed and Brenda opened a church in their zoo, Animal Adventures. Through their Sunday services and video teaching series, the Laquaderas used their love for animals and their love for God's Word to spread the gospel in their own unique way. When they aren't pastoring their church, rescuing animals in need, or holding presentations at elementary schools, Ed uses his academic background to share at secular universities the logical reasoning for why he left evolution for creationism. To date, he is one of the most sought-after herptologists in the world, an expertise that has allowed him to share God's love with animal lovers who might otherwise never step foot in a church. I think when they just see like a strange man up there with animals, talking about animals and loving Jesus and how much Jesus loves us, I think it just kind of helps them relax and realize Christianity is not so much really a religion, but it's just more about a loving relationship. I don't know if we would have ever got to where we are today without Andrew. I, I doubt it because we weren't getting there. I don't think being a partner, you realize how important it is until Andrew gets up there and, and you realize that we're literally impacting the world. To our friends and partners, we want to say thank you. Because of you, a couple of former evolutionists have been discipled under Karis and equipped to preach the gospel in their own unique way, rescuing not only animals, but God's beloved, thank you.